Hey all here OS Reviews, today we're taking a closer look at the XGoody Note 10. This is a budget Android smartphone that sells for around 95 bucks. It's unlocked, supports two SIMs, and really the selling point aside from the budget price is the massive display on the front, which measures in at 7.2 inches. So even with the modern 19 by 9 aspect ratio, it's still a massive phone, or really a phablet, uh, holding it against other devices which have a more reasonable, say, 6.3 inch screen, still is really large, by the way, you can just see how much larger the uh, XGoody Note 10 really is. It's definitely a two-handed phone, it's more of a mini tablet than anything. Otherwise, in terms of specifications, it's still a budget device. It uh, comes with a quad-core processor clocked at 1.3 gigahertz from MediaTek, coupled with 2 gigabytes of RAM. So again, fairly entry level as far as 2020 smartphones are concerned. As we saw previously, the display has a water drop notch and bezel size is actually reasonable for the low price. It comes in a few different color versions, including a blue, this is a red obviously, also comes in a purple, and the back cover is removable, which allows you to swap out the battery, which has a 3,600 milliamp hour capacity, in addition to access to dual SIM card slots and a micro SD slot to expand on the built-in memory. As far as packaging contents are concerned, in the box we have a pretty typical micro USB charging cable. So yes, unfortunately it's not type C, but at this low price, sub $100, it is what it is. There's also a quick user manual, and what you see here is actually two included screen protectors. There is an extra plastic film protector, and there's even a tempered glass hardened protector. In addition, out of the box, there's already one screen protector pre-applied. So basically, there's three screen protectors that you get included, which is pretty nice, and also a TPU soft silicon case. On the front here, the notch houses a 5 megapixel selfie camera along with a earpiece. On the right-hand spine, there's access to a volume rocker and a power key. And then on the bottom here is where we have the loudspeaker. The interesting thing though is if you remove the back cover, you'll find that the positioning of the speaker is actually a little bit towards the center. It doesn't exactly come out from this edge. If you cover up the grills here, audio is still somehow able to seep through. Nothing on the other side, and the top houses just the standard 3.5mm headphone jack. Always nice to see. It does have a slight gradient finish. The bottom portion of the red is actually a little bit darker compared to the top. It's a bit hard to show off on camera, but does look more expensive than the price would suggest. Unfortunately though, the camera setup on the top is really just a single lens. It's also 5 megapixels, so by no means is this going to be a super strong camera phone. The other two lenses here are just for decoration, I believe. And even on their website, XGoody claims that the rear camera is only a single lens, so that's 5 megapixels, so at least it's not uh, fake advertising. There is, however, a traditional flash which works using LED technology. Taking a closer look at the software next, the UI here is fairly clean. Now under system properties, it claims that this phone is running on Android 9.0 Pi. However, some of the menus in terms of the fonts uh, do feel like a slightly older version. Although benchmarking tools like CPU-Z also do list a phone running as Android 9.0. So regardless, it is able to install the latest applications from the Play Store really without any issues giving us a pretty decent experience overall as far as apps are concerned, no issues there. If you don't like the way that uh, this current UI is positioned, you can always install something like Nova Launcher, and that can give you more of a conventional track up gesture to pull up the tray. It might not be the fastest phone in the world, but uh, for basic tasks, it does seem to run fine. Um, it does support a few additional gestures in the sense that you can double tap to wake the display when it's on the sleep mode, which is nice to see, and when it's also in sleep you can draw different letters, such as an A or a C, to quickly launch into a specific app, such as a camera, for example. Speaking of, if we take a quick look at it, um, as aforementioned, at 5 megapixels this is a very basic camera, which is to be expected at this price. It is autofocus at the very least, and it does have functions like HDR, you can also apply different scene filters, there's a beauty mode, and also a panorama mode, although you would have to physically move the camera in order to generate and stitch those images together. Taking a look at some of these shots, overall colors are decent. I guess the biggest omission would be uh, kind of detail, just because 5 megapixels isn't a lot, and the screen here is so big that everything just gets zoomed up. The lack of OIS does mean this is a camera that requires a bit of light to get the best results. You have to hold it pretty steady, and in good lighting environments, you can definitely still get uh, quite passable 
observable results, but once the lights turn down, that's when the results can be a bit more shaky. The HDR definitely helps in terms of pulling in contrast and helping to keep uh, various shadows and details still exposed evenly. Overall, it's just a passable element on this phone. Now, by the way, out of the box, there's about 11 gigabytes of storage remaining from the 16 gigs, so you can further expand on that if you plan on taking lots of photos or downloading more games and applications. Let's do a quick test of the audio and video playback using YouTube. Typing is really easy since the buttons are so huge. So overall takeaway would be that the audio quality I think is average. Uh, the good news here is, as you saw, covering up just the hole on the speaker doesn't seem to actually completely silence out the sound, which is interesting since that's what happens on the majority of phones that I've tried in the past. A volume output to definitely be louder, but overall it's passable and sound is still relatively clean, doesn't distort too much even at higher volumes. So this is a decent enough, I think, audio experience just for watching casual YouTube videos with. Overall, the display visibility is also quite good for a IPS LCD panel. Brightness is sufficient, so even if there's a bit of sunlight around you, you should still be able to see it. It is an IPS display, which means that viewing angles are better than the regular TN panels, which used to occupy budget phones. So you can view it at different angles and colors still look decent and not really washed out, which is good. The only downside here is it's not the sharpest screen in the world. On this particular case, you can only crank up the resolution up to 480p, which across Across a 7.2 inch display is definitely not going to give you the most sharpness but at the very least colors do look pretty decent in terms of their accuracy and as a whole the sheer size still makes things pretty enjoyable as long as you're not too fixated on tiny details. Reception quality using Wi-Fi is also quite decent so I was always in an area that got at least two or three bars. Videos could load along without too much buffering going on. Doing a quick web browsing test here using Chrome. As far as the battery life is concerned over Overall, it's actually not too shabby. Again, it has a 3,600 mil pack, which is hot swappable, removable, always nice to see. And more than that, on a device which has a fairly low resolution display, it helps the battery run for quite a while, despite the fact that the screen size itself is really large. In this particular case, I could use this phone for about two days before I needed to recharge it again, which is great. With that being said, the micro USB speed for charging is fairly slow at 10 watts, so it takes about two hours to two and a half hours to fully recharge and we're loading back the desktop version of the site still is do doing a decent job budget phones have definitely come a long way even on devices like this these days it's not as shabby as you would think compared to again devices which were of a similar class just a few years back as far as security options are concerned like most sub $100 phones this one doesn't pack a biometric fingerprint scanner so in order to unlock it you can rely on things like a pattern a password or there is face unlock which works all right using the the front facing cam but it's not quite as secure as a password or pin. Thermals are also quite good. This is not a phone that ever really throttles in terms of performance and never even gets hot uh, even if you're loading back games and using it for quite a while and that's probably because of the larger size of the phone so there's simply more volume and room for the components to be spread out. Really the last component to talk about would be the gaming and some other uh, applications that you can find in the store. So there's two quick demos here even though it's not going to be built for really graphic demanding titles and games. Simpler ones do work all right, uh, especially 2D type games, things like uh, Angry Birds and whatnot, you'll have no issues with. There'll be some occasional drop frames that you can observe, but as a whole, not too bad considering the budget price. Um, it's really that larger screen that is helping heavier games and titles who so definitely need a bit more patience in terms of loading them up. Of course, if you're talking about the tier A games, things like PUBG or Asphalt series, that will definitely not be kind of the best application here because A, uh, again, the processor and GPU aren't that powerful and also B, with the slightly limited amount of storage that you have on board. And again, once they do load back, uh, the majority of games will still be fairly consistent and definitely playable, relatively smooth without too many issues, unless you're talking about, again, those heavier games and titles, but as a whole, doing a decent job. If anything, just be cautious about the two gigabytes of RAM, so I would recommend to close out of background 
apps if you're not using them to conserve on that to optimize the apps which are open. The call quality that all seems to be about average, not too many complaints there, mic quality also is decent, reception also works, it supports certain 4G bands dependent on region along with 3G bands as well. When I tried it out with T-Mobile earlier in the Seattle region, didn't have any problems in terms of staying connected. So that's more or less it for our hands-on review of the X Goody Note 10. More than anything, this is about presenting a massive display, 7.2 inches if you don't want to shout out much more, since typically phablets which have 7-inch displays and above are going to be more premium in terms of pricing, such as Huawei's Mate 20X, I believe, which sells for hundreds, and display quality, although not the sharpest, actually is pretty bright and colorful, and viewing angles are actually better than expected, along with bezel size, which is, I think, pretty reasonable as far as budget phones are concerned. So all in all, as long as you have your expectations tempered, I think this is actually a decent value if you want something with an ultra-large display for casual usage. You can check out more details if you're interested in the links down below, but for now that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been the X Goody Note 10.